In a previous tutorial I said you could force Premiere Pro to create a sequence which exactly matches your footage. So how do we do that? Firstly you need to bring in some footage. Now the keyboard shortcut is Ctrl or Command I but you could go to File Import Ctrl or Command I or if you are a mouse user and you've got your project panel open you can double click in the project panel and that also brings you to the dialog box where you can choose what you're going to bring in. So I'm just going to bring in a few pieces of footage holding the control key, just choose a few and then click open and that brings in some video files. Now those video files are ready for me to use and work and go with. Now if I want to create a new sequence based on this footage I can select one of these pieces of footage and say 3DC and I can drag it and I can drop it on the new items icon just here. Now, just before I do that, let me show you what the new items icon is. If I click on it, I can create new things. Now, I'll go through some of these a bit later on. One of the things I can do is create a new sequence. If I click on sequence, that just brings me to the sequence dialog box, which isn't what we want in this instance, so click cancel. But if I take a piece of footage and drop it on that icon till I get the plus sign and let go, it creates a new sequence which exactly matches the footage. So it's pixel aspect ratio, it's height, it's width, it's all matched exactly and I can move on and work on from there straight away. So the simple way of doing it, if you don't know what your footage is, is to do exactly what I've just done there. To take the footage, drag and drop onto the new items icon and the sequence is created. Now we're looking at our project panel. I'm going to show you a couple of other things. I'm going to select my project panel and I'm going to hit the maximize frame key which is the tilde key for some, which is found either above the tab key on some keyboards or just left of the enter key for some. For me, it happens to be the apostrophe key, which is, if you like, the at key, if, which is the shift at. Just hit that to maximize the frame. Firstly, you'll see that there's an awful lot of data in regards to any one of these video clips. This is called metadata, and you can see the frame rate, the media start and end, and media duration. This is where it was captured from. So this was actually captured from a tape and you can see the media tape start time and end time total duration. And then we've got the in point and the out point and the video duration for the actual video itself. We can see what type of video it is and if you actually can't see all of an item you can go between them like this and just pull them out to see more information about all the bits and pieces. And you can actually add information into here. So for instance I could say this is a good setting so I could click that and choose good. If I wanted to add a description, I can type in description and I can put uh, 3D wave past camera at whatever time it was. And that's now a searchable item. So you can add bits and pieces, you can add log notes and what have you. So there is lots of metadata associated with each of these clips. But one of the things that we like to do when we bring lots of clips in is we like to organize them into folders which in video parlance is often referred to as a bin. Now bins go back to the days when you literally had bins and you had strips of film that you put over the edge of the bin that were then taken and put together for the final edit. Now these days obviously we work in computers and we tend to talk about folders but you'll see down here we have a new bin button. So it's still using the video parlance, it actually means new folder. And I can click on that and a new bin is created ready to be renamed. So I can rename this one video and I can hit enter to get it and I can then scroll through other things to rename them if I wish or I can click away and I can choose any of these video items by holding the control key in fact, select them all and just drag them to the video bin and in they go and there they are inside the video bin. And I would also have a bin for my sequences if I had lots of sequences so a new bin and I can call that one sequences. I have plural sequences and I can drag my sequence in here. So you can see that's how we can actually find the bins, open and close them. I'm in the list view at the moment. If you're in the icon view and you want to open and close them, well, you'd have thought you'd double click. 
But if I double click, you'll see that I'm going to open a new floating window, which isn't always what you want. If you want to have the window actually open up inside your project panel, get rid of that, hold the control key and double click your bin. And that opens it up inside and then of course you can zoom in and you've still got access to hover scrubbing however you want to play. So the way to open them inside the project panel is to control double click but then how do you get back to the original look? Well you need to see this little icon right up here which is the return to previous level little icon. You click that it takes you back to the previous level. Another option would be to alt double click but if you alt double click that's actually going to create a new tab with whatever you've alt double clicked as a new tab which will then tab alongside all the other tabs inside this frame so let me show you if I alt or option double click there's the new tab um, first thing I would do if I had the new tab is just drag it along so it's right next to the project panel so they're literally side by side but my preference is actually the control double click so control double click to open it now say I want to bring in lots of new items I've actually got some images that I want to bring in but I want to bring them straight into their own bin what I can do is create the new bin and call it pics for pictures and then I can control double click to open it up in its own window and then I can do control I or command I to open my import dialog box and I can go and find my pictures. So I've got Bambra Castle, I've got Dunstanborough Castle, and I've got Lindisfarne, and I've got a couple of other pics, uh, seabirds here, seals here. Just click open and they're actually going to open inside that folder, inside that bin. So I can now go up and you see I've got video, sequences, pics. I would also have audio, so I'd create one for audio, and I would definitely have one for titles. Titles. So these are a whole bunch of bins that I would create, and when I wanted to create new titles, I would open up the titles bin, and as I create new titles, they would drop in there straight away. However, one other thing I would do, I'm going to alt double click to open the titles, is I would create bins inside bins. So, for instance, if I've got lots of people that I need to introduce, I might create one that says lower thirds. We'll explain lower thirds later on, but lower thirds are the little titles that you have at the lower third of the screen that introduce a person. And I might also have a separate bin that says does credits. And now when I go up a level, I go up and I've got my titles, I can control double click, I can go into my lower thirds and I can control double click and create them in there. And then when you create the items, I'm just going to go back up, if you've got the bin open, they'll drop straight into the bin, which will make the whole thing a lot easier, your management a lot easier to work with. So I'm going to minimise the screen back to how it was. So you've got the list view, you've got the icons view. List view, obviously, if you want to open up bins, is simply choosing the little scrolly arrow to be able to see what's inside them very simply otherwise if you're in the icon view it's control double click or alt double click if you shift double click by the way that also gives you the the floating window so one other thing to show you I'm going to control double click my video and I'm going to just move my screen up a bit so I can see all these items now I'm going to get rid of what's in my timeline at the moment and I'm going to choose in point and out point, so let's just have a little look, see if we can find a decent point for that 3D wave. I'm not actually going to be able to find it very easily. So let me just drag backwards and forwards and see if I can find that wave. There's the wave. So there's my in point, so I'm going to do I for in point and just go past until the wave comes the other side. So out, so I've got an in point and out put tiny one on that. Let's look for the dog coming past the camera, so let's say we'll start there. In point, go forwards to just past the camera, hit O for out point. And let's look at this one. I want it to start just as the item comes into view, the headland. So I'll do I and just past the castle O. And on this particular one, it doesn't really matter except there's a camera move at the front. So get past the camera move, I, O. So they've all, if I just click on them, it's got in points and out points. What order do I want them to go on my timeline? Well, let's say I want the boat to go in first and then I want the dog. So I'm going to control click the dog. Then I want the wave, 
and then I want the boats. Now I can automate those to my timeline. Here's my current time indicator right at the beginning, my playhead. I've got a little icon down here that says automate to sequence. Click on that and it says how do you want to do it? I want to do it by the selection order. I selected them in the order so I can just go OK and there they all are. Notice that my in points, my out points have been respected and I allowed it to drop in some transitions when it happened. So that's one quick way of going straight from the project panel to your timeline but then we'd still need to edit in the timeline to get things perfect. Okay, in the next tutorial we're going to start looking at some of our preferences.